<laughs> hey, guess what? Elon Musk reactivates Alex Jones's uh, Twitter account. I'm not calling it X. After yeah. a five-year ban, it's been five years. I can't believe it was that long. And so here's the way he did it. I didn't like the way he did it. He he said he did out a questionnaire. He put on a poll oh, and he brother. said, should we reinstate Alex jo Jones on this platform? Vox Populi, Vox Day, which means the people have spoken or something. Whatever. Yeah, it was called the First Amendment a long time ago. And so that's so what I said. On. I said, either you follow and honor the First Amendment or you don't. It's not a Rubik's Cube. It's a value we're supposed to cherish and fight to defend. I defended Alex Jones's First Amendment right from day one. I argued against everyone at TYT that if they can do it to him, they will do it to everyone. And they are. First, it was Alex Jones. Then it quickly went to the leading doctors and scientists who disagree with the establishment and journalists also. And it culminated with the censoring of a former president of the country. It wasn't hard to predict that this would happen because I was able to do it. It didn't take intelligence. It took, took courage, to, courage to say so. Most people are sheep and willingly give up their liberties and freedoms. So I thought it was a bullshit way that he did it. I'm glad he did it. No other social media is doing it. So tip of the hat. And here it is. Alex Jones reinstated. He's got, he immediately got 1.6 million followers just Jeez. that quick. And he's following 596 people. I'm not one of them. It kind of hurts me. I'm, I'm following him. I went and followed him. Uh, so Elon Musk on Sunday reinstated, reinstated. Jones was previously suspended from Twitter in 2018 for violating its abusive behavior policy. Oh, yeah, right. Now, are they going to now in the next paragraph try to act like it has to do with Sandy Hook? Yes. The next paragraph. Watch this. Although, tw so... He says that suspension deemed permanent under the company's prior blah, 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 lawsuit for spreading the false claim that the Sandy Hook element, that is not why they banned him. No, but it came as they banned him. So we're going to link them. But that's it, not yeah. why they but they yeah. they literally said it was because he said he went after Darcy said fucking Darcy. Called Darcy as something. Uh, yeah. A dog face pony. So that's something yeah, like something, literally version a maggot or something. So that is Oliver Darcy is a maggot. And by the way, a ballot, they banned Alex Jones for five years for abusive behavior. But fortunately for him, the entire world has become a dystopian hellscape that makes him look like a lighthearted YouTube prankster in comparison since he got banned. It really is amazing how different it looks looking at Alex Jones now from uh, only a few years ago. Although 20 children. So they're going to pretend that that was it. Uh, that thing had nothing to do with it. <laughs> But I should just be happy because he said that one time. So I should be happy they kicked him off for this other thing that they're not going to tell me what it is. So, <laughs> so believers in Jones's blatantly false claims would go on to harass and threaten bereft family members. In some cases, physically, you can't blame Alex Jones for that. Why That's are you like, reporting that? You, I thought it was why he got kicked off. Why none he of got, this had to do with it. None of that had to off. do with it. Some of those targeted had to move from their homes. You know, we already have, if Alex Jones was breaking a law, we, there's already uh, police enforcement for that. There's already state's attorneys in every state. Why didn't they go ahead and put him and take him, uh, put him in jail for that if he was breaking the law and he was going against the First Amendment? Either he's breaking the First Amendment and going outside the bounds of the Constitution, or he isn't. And since when does the press care about grieving parents? <laughs> Only uh, being harassed. Uh, only with Seth Rich. Care. Only with Seth Rich. Did you could show in front of John Kennedy Jr. his father's head getting blown off at the drop of a hat. You could yeah. do that ad nauseum, twenty four seven. But you can't. You couldn't talk about Seth Rich where he was for four hours. Nobody knew where he was. You couldn't talk about that, and you couldn't do this. All of a sudden, all this. By the way, those people who are harassing them. There's already laws against that. There's already laws against people harassing people. So they just keep going on. They're talking about Sandy Hook. And then they gave him a $1 billion judgment. Why do you think they gave him a $1 billion? Because they wanted to bankrupt him and make sure he could never come back. That's what that's about. Uh, users of Elon Musk's led Twitter social media platform had anticipated the reinstatement of Jones <laughs> since at least Thursday when Musk said he would consider reinstating Jones. Since the platform aspires to be the global town square, permanent bans should be extremely rare. Musk wrote, and so people will al also say to me, well, Jimmy, it's not the First Amendment. That has to do with the government. And so if you're 
Let me explain it to you again. I've been explaining this since he got banned. Let's say you're right. So what? I don't want a, co a company telling me what I can say. Well, we found a loophole where we can censor. Yay. So even so if so in today's world. So let's say uh, it, can can if when when uh, the telephone company, if they don't like what you're, they're saying on your telephone, can they take away your telephone? No. Just like a social media company shouldn't be allowed to take away your social media presence because everybody needs social media to function as a human in our society. You can't have social media and run without social media. You can't run a business. You can't be a, a public person. You can't sell tickets. You can't be anything. You have to have a social media presence. That's why every business has one. And so now it's become essential. And so taking that. And so now Facebook and Twitter isn't just some kind of niche social media thing it's become the town square and so the town square is like if i go into a park i get to say whatever i want in the middle of that park just like i get to say whatever i want in the middle of facebook or should be allowed to say whatever i want in the middle of facebook or twitter or instagram those are now the town square and so they have now it should be treated as a public utility that's what I'm saying. Just like you can't ban someone from using AT&T can't take away your telephone uh, if they don't like what you're saying on the telephone. Jeff Z Mark Zuckerberg and Twitter say shouldn't be allowed to take away your social media presence because they don't like what you're saying if you aren't breaking a law. By the way, the and if you is are doing it. And if you are breaking a law, there's the government there to prosecute you for breaking a law. I don't need somebody at Twitter to, to go and enforce a law. There's already state's attorneys. There's already just uh, attorney generals. There's already sheriffs and police chiefs all across the country. We don't need I don't need Twitter and Mark Zuckerberg to act as a cop enforcing uh, free speech rules. They're not supposed to be able to. They're a publisher. So they're not that, a publisher. So they, you're right. So they're you're also they have they so Twitter and Facebook and Instagram, they also enjoy special protection under the law. So if if you're gonna censor people, that makes you a publisher. And so if you're a publisher, now somebody just like you can sue a book for defamatory shit, you don't sue the bookstore, you sue the publisher of the book. So well, now they're acting as the publisher and they're pretending they're the bookstore at the same time. So you can't sue them. So you can't sue them for defamatory shit on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. But they are acting like a publisher. So you should. So they have a special cutout. It's called, I think, Section 220 or whatever that is. So now they're so they have special protection from the government. So that that should they shouldn't have that and they shouldn't be allowed to be publishers and a bookstore at the same time so now i've explained this i hope someone clips it so i don't have to have my editors clip it and so i can just tweet this at fucking dummies when they say stupid shit like i know they're already saying if they say it's not the government <laughs> that is a lie we know the government's directly pressuring them to do this that's right and the, so we, there's nothing separate the government is causing this that's right um so so let me see if there's anything else worth reading out of this bullshit CNBC article. While Musk, who is also CEO of Tesla and SpaceX, bills himself of a free speech defender, he will, he has wielded control of X platform to suspend the accounts of perceived enemies and vocal critics there. For example, X suspended the accounts of software developer Travis Brown as same-day private jet tracker account. That was... Okay. They just got done being mad at Alex Jones they because just, someone was getting harassed. That's and right. And a guy and who was who harassed. Made thing to harass him... To blackmail him for a job, I believe. That's right. That's, oh, we can't so, harass him? That's they're right. They're not about harassment. So but. now they're saying they can't harass him. Musk has faced a backlash for changes he's made on Twitter since taking over the platform in late October 2022, including the widespread reversal of account suspensions. He famously reversed the suspension of former President Donald Trump, and they put that in there like it's a bad thing. Yeah, take it to Mastodon, pussy. <laughs> so let me <laughs> take that shit to threads. In recent weeks, many major advertisers suspended their campaigns on Twitter after Musk promoted what the White House called anti-Semitic and racist hate. Musk would go on to tell those advertisers to go F yourselves and don't advertise from the stage of the 2023 Dealbook Summit in New York. 
Michael Tracy says Alex Jones was purged from social media after big tech companies all simultaneously decided he violated their policies, which they invented on the fly due to political pressure. There wasn't even a specific violation. He was just deemed too evil to be allowed on their platforms. Forrest Mommy says Alex Jones is back and I haven't been forced to read a single tweet of his. So what do you have to say, do dissonance? Well, uh, this... Go ahead. Uh, th this this is the this is the mixed bag of social media and the internet. Um, back when people were using print and you made your independent newspaper or your independent political zine, they really couldn't deplatform you. Now you have this platform that everybody was drawn into as the new medium of communicating political ideas and dissent. Uh, but they also have a lot more control over you this way. They can turn you off. They can hit a switch and you're gone. Um, Elon himself obviously is a very mixed bag. And it's sad that we are reduced. It really shows you how much we live in an oligarchy. It is sad that we are reduced to deciding which scumbag billionaire we need to align with to preserve our speech rights. Yeah. Elon is no free speech champion. We dropped a couple of clips of Taibi talking about how he thought that he might have multiple personality disorder. They throttled that shit right away. <laughs> right away we put that on Twitter. I've also had that experience with a lot of trans content that we've put on there, critical of the trans movement, that it's gotten throttled. Um, is he better than Dorsey? Yeah, I mean, of course he's better than Dorsey, but what kind of a democracy is it that you have to decide which billionaire you're going to be a fanboy for to get yeah. your speech well, out I, there? I, I agree, uh, but I'll take it, because it's Facebook, I just... Oh, by the way, I should have did this story today. Twitter, what's it called? TikTok suspended us. They don't tell you why. They just oh, you too. Yes, they just did that to Greenwald. That Green, yeah, they Glenn, got Greenwald too. Glenn Greenwald didn't get suspended. He got permanently banned from TikTok. We're just suspended, as far as I can tell. Uh, uh. So that happened almost. So there's another crackdown happening right now. And right, it's happening right. on TikTok. And so Elon Musk is light years ahead of TikTok and Facebook and Instagram. Mark Zuckerberg is the yes. biggest little bitch to the, the deep state that there ever was. At least Elon Musk is standing up. He let the president of the United States come back on. You can talk about co leading doctors, scientists and journalists get to have a platform. And now he brought back on Alex Jones. So he is light years ahead of every sure. other social media platform. But I do agree with you, Russ. That's a good point. Now we have to rely on the, the largesse of a billionaire so we can have constitutionally protected fucking speech in our country country remember right. the big criticism of uh you know back in the it's the culture of the west and islam battling since the when that was always the ongoing discussion it's coming back now but i remember when when i watched like neocon types down the islamic world when it was more advanced than europe well no they well that was just because some rich prince was really into the arts or science and was funding it and allowing it that's the only time they really had those times which sounds a lot like us. Like, yeah. We have free speech because a billionaire feels like we should at the moment. <laughs> like, How are we different from these other cultures that we're supposedly better than? Well, we had Greenwald on earlier this week. And one of the questions that I, I wished I had asked him, and Russ asked a version of this, but it really does feel like speech is a privilege now and not a right. Like you only yeah. really feel like you have free speech in certain venues. <clears throat> um, Twitter, yeah. I feel much freer than I do on YouTube, much freer than I did on Facebook back when I used Facebook. Still not totally free. I feel totally free on a platform like Rumble. Rumble. On Substack, that's why we keep our Substack going because it is one of the few very principled free speech outlets out there. Um, but yeah, um, the internet has become the new public square. And the question is not whether it technically is a public square because these large forums of the internet are in private hands like these giant social media companies. The question is should they function as a public square? town square right should this function as the new public square and therefore should they operate as a public utility like a phone company 
And that's a question that a lot of the pro-censorship liberals don't want to answer. They just fall back on, well, it is a private company. Okay, yes, we know technically it is a private company. Should it function that way or should it function as a town square? They won't answer that question because they're too big of a coward to actually say they are for censorship. Just they so, actually believe in it. That's they right. They want it. Right. And just like I, no. I made the case that a phone company can't turn off your phone service if they don't like what you're saying on the phone. They Just like a power company can't turn off the power to your house if they don't like what you're saying on Facebook or Twitter or the or what kind of business you're running. They can't. They have to send the power to strip clubs. They have to send the power to... <laughs> To, they can't they can't just go I don't like your your business so I so that's a private company but there's they, they have to they're a public utility go well, ahead why is it exactly bad? and if oh. you use the phone to to harass somebody and you get taken to court and you lose you have to pay whatever the price is for losing that lawsuit but they don't turn your phone off for life that's right <laughs> right once you pay your debt to whoever you owe it to you get to talk on the phone again yep. right you don't have permanent bans. Right. The, whenever the, you bring the, whenever you bring this up to liberals, all of a sudden they become instant libertarians. All of a sudden they believe in the sanctity uh, of right, private, private corporations yeah. to uh, run their business any way they want because they've done polling on this and they are the most pro censorship sector of society. Which, as as Keaton says, they don't want to admit that in the end they support that. That's what's so terrifying about that class, the professional managerial class. What we've really seen over the last few years is there's almost no crazy idea, no absurdity that they will not accept if they're told <laughs> by people that they perceive as being in authority and dictating to them what kind of signaling they have to give off to be in good standing as wannabe striving elites. They'll accept anything. Yeah. Chemically castrate children. Sure. Sure. Yeah. No, that's the right thing to do. If you don't believe that's the right thing, you're a monster. You're a bigot. The idea that you could so easily have convinced so many people that that's right, even some sacrificing their own children on that altar. If you can do that, what can you not program people to do and conform to? What would the limit be? If that's not a limit. Yeah, well, a company could do what it wants, except when it's Elon Musk doing what he wants. Apparently. Like, boy, you flip that right. back and forth real <laughs> yeah. quick, oh, yeah, huh? that, yeah, then it's a loophole. That's a loophole. It's a, only if the, it's the billionaires that are aligned with Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer, then they are pro-censorship. If it's, if it's uh, a billionaire on the outs. And that is what I'm worried about. I, They're going to come at Elon hard. He, he's... He's a thorn in their side, and and he he is. And while I I I'm not one of those who worships Elon, I think a lot of people mythologize Elon. I think he's a douchebag, but he's a better douchebag than the douchebags he's fighting. But there are a lot more of them than there are of him. Uh yes, a hundred percent. And I just want to remind outnumbered by bigger douchebags. Yes. And <laughs> if you'd like to see some douchebags doing comedy this Friday. <laughs> In Studio City, we're going to be telling jokes. Uh, douchebag Kurt, the uh, Kurt Mexican, will be there, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> Steph Zamarera and uh, Misha will be telling jokes. I'll be there doing all my new Israel Palestine jokes. I'll be there this Friday in Studio City, California, and then Sunday in Oxnard, California. So if you're anywhere near as Oxnard, uh, come see us at the Levity Live. Go to JimmyDoor.com for a link for all those tickets. It's going to be a fun show. I think you'll even get to meet and greet us in uh, Oxnard, right? So, yeah, if you'd like to shake the hand, take a picture, you could do that in Oxnard. Go to JimmyDoor.com. Uh, let me say thank you to the fellas from Due Dissonance, uh, Keaton and Russ. Russ, by the way, will be filling in um, for me uh January 8th through the 15th, we're going, uh, we're taking a little bit of a, a week-long break. Maybe maybe a little bit more, we're going to see. But uh, Russ will be here then, uh, so everybody tune in and uh, to see him to do his thing. What else, what would you like to tell people before you say goodbye? Uh, uh, please find us on YouTube, Rumble, um, and uh, thank you so much for having us. Later. Okay, I appreciate you coming on. Thanks for taking time to... Uh, 
Spend some time with our audience. It's so nice we've had this time together. Just to have a laugh or sing a song. Seems we just get started. And before you know it, (laughs) comes the time we have to say so long. Are you going to be singing at the show on Oxnard? Sometimes I sing. Sometimes I when I did a show when I did a show in D.C. I sang some Frank Sinatra. I know it was uh, Dean Martin. Uh, Nellie McKay was on the show. She played the uh, ukulele, and I sang some Dean Martin. It was fun. Um, Anyway, so go to JimmyDoor.com for all those. Everybody, uh, go to (laughs) KurtMexican.com. I should get that domain name quickly. You should get that. Yeah, (laughs) yeah, definitely. And everyone, check out the Do Dissonance. They're they're doing great work over there. We're doing live comedy shows in Oxnard, California, Venice, California, Palmdale, California, Omaha, Nebraska, Des Moines, Milwaukee, Lansing, Michigan, Bend, Oregon, Portland, Oregon, Seattle, Washington, and Boston. Plus, we're going to put a date in Edmonton, Canada, plus Vancouver. See ya. Go to JimmyDoor.com for a link for all those tickets. (laughs) 